Greetings, this is Lex with Lexin82Gaming. Today we're playing Elite Dangerous, a spaceship simulator that takes place inside a one-to-one -one scale model of the Milky Way. We're sitting in my exploration ship called the Asp Explorer, which I'm preparing to take a trip to the galactic core to visit Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. This game is massive, and from other logs I've watched or read, it's likely to take a month or longer to get there and back. Along the way, I'll be exploring strange new worlds, taking screenshots, enjoying the views, and gathering data to sell back for profit when I return. To start off this exploration series, I'll begin by talking about my ship build as I prepare to go out into the deep unknown. I'll also be checking in frequently to make short video entries talking about what I've been up to and hopefully to show you anything really interesting that comes up. I'll be posting screenshots on my Facebook page which I'll link below. Okay, without further ado, let's discuss the build. Okay, first we'll start off by looking at this uh, neat fitting tool called Coriolis.io. So we're looking at the ASP Explorer and the modules we have for standard, the lightweight alloy bulkheads. We're going to use a 2A power plant. We want to use the lowest power plant that will continue to power all of our modules uh, that we can fit. And we want to go with an A class to keep the heat efficiency uh, positive. Uh, for the rest of the sort of filler standard equipment, you want to go with the D class or D rated class. Um, for the lightest weight. So for thrusters, we're going to go with a 4D, since we don't really need a five a class five thrusters. Um, for the life support, we're going with a 4D. For a power distributor, we're going with a 3D. Uh, sensors, 5D. Now the fuel tank, uh, 5C. Uh, you want to have that for your um, your range. And for the frame shift drive, you want to go with the best one you can go with because that's going to give you the longest jump range. Uh, which you'll appreciate as you're uh, going from system to system. So we went with a 5A for that. For the internal compartments, um, I went with a mid-range fuel scoop. Uh, my understanding is if you go with a really high, uh, like say a 6A fuel scoop, and it's like 28 million credits, uh, you won't really save that much time because you're going to be doing other things while you're scooping. Uh, let's say you're looking at the nav page, uh, or you're, you're taking a look at the map, for the system. Uh, by the time you come back to it, uh, the fuel scoop will, will already have finished, and so you're not really saving a whole lot of time if you're doing other things uh, while you're scooping. So I went with the mid range uh, 6C fuel scoop. For the uh, auto field maintenance units, I've got two of these. Uh, apparently, they can repair each other if you've got two, so I went with that. And I went with the class D for the lighter weight. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the, the weight doesn't matter, but um, just a little bit uh, cheaper, I guess, is what I went for on that. Uh, for the planetary vehicle hangar, I went with the 2G. That one is lighter. Uh, I believe the 2H is 12 tons. Uh, with the shield generator, uh, you don't really need a shield generator for exploration, but uh, when you're landing on planets, which I plan to be doing, uh, I feel like a shield generator is a good idea in order to give you a little bit of a buffer in case you mess something up or the gravity is too high. Uh, something of that nature. So I do have a shield generator. I'll have it offline most of the time. Uh, while I'm actually exploring, uh, but when I go to a plant surface, I'll turn it on. Then you need your detailed surface scanner in order to make the uh, the scans of the, the planetary bodies, and your advanced discovery scanner for the system. All right. Uh, also for the utility mounts, we have heat sink launchers. Um, these are going to be the things that you use when you get a little too close to a sun, uh, and I think that's kind of self-explanatory there. So I've got four of those. I'll keep three of them offline uh, and I'll have one online until I use it and then I'll just swap it out uh, as needed. Um, so this is my sort of online offline uh, mapping here for when I'm actually exploring. So um, I'll have one heat seek launcher on. I'm going to have the vehicle hangar, the heat seek launchers, uh, the field maintenance units, even the cargo hatch. Uh, all those are going to be offline. Uh, and that basically gives me about an 82.3% uh, usage for my power plant, so that's pretty good. And this is the cost over here, uh, the total that I spent. Uh, so it's 15.7 million for the total fit, uh, and I saved up for that by bounty hunting uh, over the course of maybe two or three days. So it wasn't that long. 
Um, my total jump range here is going to be about 33.49 light years with a total range of roughly 213.81 light years. That uh, works out to about, uh, I'll need to rescoop uh, fuel every uh, six jumps. So I don't want to go any further than six jumps without a star that I can scoop at. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I uh, plot my route through the galaxy. And um, that's pretty much it for the fit. And I can go into the uh, the actual hangar here. We can take a look. Uh, this is going to be the last uh, station that I'm docked at before I head out. Uh, and then it's going to be into the great unknown after that. All right, so now I'm going to show you uh, my initial course to get out of the bubble, uh, or basically the habitable space zone, if you will. So we're going to take a look at the galaxy map. All right, and as you can see, I've already plotted my initial course, but here's where I am now in Ikuru. And basically what, I, what I'm going to be doing for the most part is I zoom out. I'm going to look for the galactic core, which is over there. So I'll just zoom something like that. I'll go in. And then to get out of the bubble, if we take a look at the power play, basically anywhere outside of this power play zone is going to be outside of the bubble, so in this, these colored areas. So what I did is I just kind of zoom forward towards the core pretty much until I was outside of all the colored areas. And once I did that, I just looked for uh, stars that I could fuel up on and plotted my route. And with that route, uh, I counted to make sure that I would, know, I would never go over six jumps without a star that I could fuel up on. Uh, it just so happens that I can fuel up on pretty much every star on the way. So the stars that you can fuel up on are the O types, the B types, the A types, F, G, K, and M types. Uh, these hotter stars here supposedly are a little harder to fuel up on, um, but we'll see how that goes. So I've got those set up so I can see what I can fuel up on, and the ones I'm really looking for are the proto stars, the wolf riots, white dwarfs, and non sequence stars. So that is my initial route. Uh, it has been plotted already, and I believe it is five jumps. Uh, and then once we leave COL 285, we will be in deep space. All right, it's time to head out.
Timeshift Drive charging. Well, that little interdiction uh, set me back a little bit. Looks like I will be docking again quite a bit sooner than I thought. On the plus side, I am on the edge of populated space. So hopefully after this little repair, uh, I will be able to continue and no longer have to worry about interdictions. Ready to 